grade five students. Today we're going to be looking at lesson one from the week of June 8th through June 12th for grade five advanced mathematics. Let's get started. Today we're going to make sense of problems by using a three read strategy when we're solving real world problems that involve volume. The first step in our three reads process is that we are going to read the problem to make sense of it. We are going to read the whole problem to find out what it is about. Then we're going to ask ourselves, what is happening in the problem? What action is taking place? Then we need to think about how we would describe the problem in our own words. We'll also want to figure out what questions we might have after reading the problem. Here's our problem. We are not going to focus on the numbers during this read because we are just trying to make sense of the problem. Chesapeake Shorehouse will be receiving a delivery of large boxes. The manufacturer is using a delivery truck that is blank by blank by blank. They want to figure out how many large boxes will fit on the truck and the combined volume of the large boxes in the truck. So after reading this problem, I know that the story is about a company called Chesapeake Shorehouse. They will be receiving a delivery of large boxes. We don't know the size of the delivery truck, but we do know that they will be delivering only large boxes on the truck. Some questions that we need to answer are, how many large boxes will fit on the truck? And what is the combined volume of the large boxes in the truck? We also need to figure out some information when we read again, like what are the dimensions of the truck? What are the dimensions of the large box? I'm going to use some visual images to help me remember what is going on in this problem. I know there is a delivery. I am picturing a truck that looks something like this. I don't know the size of the truck, but I do know that the truck has a length, a width, that's kind of hard to see in this picture, and a height. That will tell us how much space there is to hold those boxes. I also am picturing a large box that looks something like this. Again, I don't know the dimensions of the box, but I know that the box has a length, a width, and a height also. Next, we are going to reread the problem, and this time we are going to reread it to pay attention to the detail. First, we're going to think about the numbers in the problem and what they represent. Next, we're going to think about the problem structure or type. So what type of mathematics will we need to do in order to answer our questions? We will look for important vocabulary, charts, or graphs that will provide us with information to help us solve our problem. We will also make sure that we are paying attention to the details by putting a star, underlining, or circling parts of the text that we understand. We will also put question marks next to the text that we might need to know a little bit more about. Let's go back to our problem and read it again. Chesapeake Shorehouse will be receiving a delivery of large boxes. I notice that there is a visual diagram of the large box down here. It shows us that the dimensions are three feet by two feet by two feet. That will be important for later to figure out how many large boxes will fit on the truck. Let's keep reading. The manufacturer is using a delivery truck that is 12 feet by 7 feet by 7 feet. 
The dimensions of the truck are important for this problem. I need to know the size of the truck to determine how many boxes will fit inside. So now I know that the length is 12 feet, the width is seven feet, and the height is seven feet. We need to figure out how many large boxes will fit on the truck and the combined volume of the large boxes in the truck. From our second read, we figured out the dimensions of the truck. We know that the truck is 12 feet long. We also know that the truck is seven feet tall. We can't really see the width here, but we were told that the width is seven feet. The box is three feet by two feet by two feet. I know that this problem has to do with the amount of space that is available in the truck and the number of large boxes that will fit inside. We also need to figure out the volume of all of those large boxes. Now we are going to read to represent. That means we will need to use the information from the problem to represent the problem with a drawing. We will need to think about what operation we will be using to solve the problem. We will need to think about what strategies we can use that will help us solve this problem. As we are creating our representation, we need to make sure that we are labeling it with the information we know. So let's read our problem one more time and then think about how we will represent it. Chesapeake Shorehouse will be receiving a delivery of large boxes. The manufacturer is using a delivery truck that is 12 feet by seven feet by seven feet. They want to figure out how many large boxes will fit on the truck and the combined volume of the large boxes in the truck. To begin to represent this problem, we need to think about the information that we know. We know the dimensions of the truck, so we can start to think about how the large boxes will be packed in the truck. We can represent the base of the truck bed using a rectangle that is 12 feet in length by seven feet wide. We also know that the base of the large box has dimensions of three feet by two feet. We need to think about how many of the three feet by two feet bases can fit in the base of the truck. Here is a detailed representation of the base of the truck bed filled with large boxes. We can see that this representation is showing us the length of the truck bed, 12 feet, and the width of the truck bed, seven feet. We can also see the dimensions of the base of the large box, three feet by two feet. Next, I need to determine how many layers of boxes I can stack based on the height of the truck. This representation shows the view of the layers of the truck. The representation is labeled with the width of the truck, seven feet, and the height of the truck, seven feet. We can also see that the width of the large box and the height of the large box are shown. Once we have figured out how many boxes can fit on the truck, we will need to figure out the combined volume of those boxes. I know that I can find the volume of one box by using the formula length times width times height. So I can do three feet times two feet times two feet to determine the volume of one large box. Step four in the process is to solve the problem. We've already done a lot of the hard work because we really made sense of the problem and have a really good representation. Now, 
we're going to make sure that we are accurate and precise. That means we didn't make any mistakes when creating our representation and that we checked the work. We're going to make sure we follow the directions in the problem and complete all parts. We will make sure to write equations, expressions, explanations, or justifications if we have to. And we want to make sure we use correct math vocabulary, symbols, and numbers. After completing each part of the problem, we will make sure that we complete an answer statement. The two answer statements that need to be completed for this problem are blank large boxes can fit on the truck and the combined volume of the boxes is. To begin to answer the question, how many large boxes will fit in the truck? we need to find out how many boxes will fit on the base of the truck. Our representation shows us that four large boxes will fit in one row, and that three rows of boxes can fit in the base. One, two, three. So, a total of 12 large boxes will fit in one layer of boxes in the truck. Next, I need to determine how many layers of 12 boxes I can stack based on the height of the truck. This representation shows that I can stack three layers on the truck. One layer, two layers, three layers. Three layers times 12 boxes equals 36 boxes that can fit on the truck. 36 large boxes can fit on the truck. Now that I know that 36 boxes can fit on the truck, I need to find the combined volume of those boxes. I can find the volume of one box by solving the equation three feet times two feet times two feet. This gives me a volume of 12 feet cube. Now to find the combined volume, I need to multiply 12 feet cubed times 36 boxes, which equals 400 32 feet cubed. Now let's complete our answer statements to make sure we have answered all parts to the problem. First, we needed to figure out how many large boxes would fit on the truck. We determined that 36 large boxes would fit on the truck. Next, we needed to figure out the combined volume of those boxes. We determined that the combined volume of the boxes is 432 feet cubed. Now it's time for us to check our work. So we will reread the problem and read our answer. We will make sure that we have used the information from the problem to find our answer and that our answer makes sense. We will make sure that we have answered all parts of the problem. Let's reread our story problem again. Chesapeake Storehouse will be receiving a delivery of large boxes. The manufacturer is using a delivery truck that is 12 feet by seven feet by seven feet. They want to figure out how many large boxes will fit on the truck and the combined volume of the large boxes in the truck. Again, we determined that 36 large boxes would fit on the truck, and the combined volume of the boxes is 432 feet cubed. To figure out how many boxes would fit on the truck, we thought about the dimensions of both the truck and the large box. To determine the combined volume of the boxes on the truck, 
we used a known formula and accurately labeled our answers with feet cubed. To determine if this answer is reasonable, I can think about the volume of the entire delivery truck. The delivery truck has a volume of 588 feet cubed. We determined that the combined volume of the large boxes on the truck was 432 feet cubed. Since this volume is less than the volume of the truck, we know that our answer is reasonable. Now it's your turn. If you have access, feel free to work through the Try It section. And when you are ready and comfortable, check out the Show What You Know section and complete the assignment there. If you do have access, you should be completing Dreambox learning lessons about six to eight lessons per week. Remember that you need to first log into BCPS1 using your own username and password. Then access Dreambox through the instructional and productivity tools icon. Great job today, fifth graders. Remember, stay safe, wash your hands, and do the math. Well, boys and girls, that's it from us for this week. And on behalf of your friends here at BCPS Math, we want you to know that you are so loved, that you are so important, and that you hold the future in your hands. So stay safe, be kind, and do the math.